did he address you as mama on more than one occasion? Yes. He's supposed to be talking to you about a case. Yes, Doug is laughing, bro. I was calling you talking about going out on a date. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> Look at Doug smirking. Good morning. Hope you slept well, mama. <laughs> the Young Thug trial continues after a week-long break. On cross-examination, Thug's lawyer Keith Adams shows how creepy investigator Hamilton was with the witness Miss Bennett. He called her mama on several occasions and clearly flirted in text messages. All right, boys, we're finally back after a week-long break. A few funny moments, a few interesting moments throughout this video. Join the channel membership right now. It's only 10 cents per day. Love you guys. Here we go. First look at Thug on day 55. I like this uh, plaid. I'm digging it. Looking clean as hell. There's no audio right now. Hopefully this week we get a few days of good testimony. Brian Steele's standing for something, but there's still no audio right now. Brian Steele's talking and there's no audio right now. Still no audio. 25 minutes into the stream. In January 2024, he recorded that call. It's his body camera. So you see him and you hear his voice and my voice. And the interview is about 10 minutes, but now it's an exhibit we were never served with. I have no problem with the interview, but it seems like um, a member of the prosecution team is constantly trying to attempt to interject either me, mostly me, sometimes Mr. Adams, maybe other counsel, I don't want to speak for them, into this process, which is not, it's a denial of Mr. Williams' right to counsel. It is an unsworn witness rule violation. It's a due process violation or fair trial, constitutional violation. The state attorney's office has a vendetta against the lawyers doing their job for their client. What it does is it causes the jurors not to look at the lawyers like a conduit of information and an advocate, but now they're raising, raising credibility. And the examples I'm giving is right when we started, the prosecutor making an opening statement for the state put up an exhibit that was seen by the jurors. It was up. That's how I knew to object to it. In violation of the court's order to share all PowerPoints or exhibits that are going to be shown in opening statement. Um, it says Brian Steele represented wrongly Mr. Ryan and Mr. Blaylock on appeal currently. I still can't believe they put that in opening statements. First thing the jury sees is that he represented people in the courtroom, which he did not. Constant, did you interview with Brian Steele? Did you speak with Keith Adams? Which is what we're supposed to do. But the jurors don't know that. The court's never instructed, although I've asked. That, that that is the proper protocol for a lawyer representing a person got for the charge with a crime. Remember, what you won't say is not evidence. I'm going to give the jury instruction on that. So I think we've kind of covered this stuff already, Mr. Steele. So. The jury's instructed that obviously whatever they say is not evidence, but it's kind of, it's, it's inevitable for them to feel a certain way about what both sides are hinting at. The state is hinting at the lawyers being untrustworthy and lying. Do you know, do you know how's my interview with Detective Gartman? You should listen to it. It's about 10 minutes. Why does that come into evidence? I don't know. That has a chilling effect on a lawyer's work. I don't know. I'll ask Ms. Love in just a second. Of lawyers being involved in the case because it's really distasteful under the Constitution because it denies it's about Mr. Williams receiving a fair trial. It's not about him having his lawyer go back and the jurors say, oh, well, I don't believe the lawyer. So therefore, I'm going to rule against Mr. Williams. Yeah, that's the point I was trying to. The jury having feelings towards the district attorney and the lawyers, it's natural to have feelings like they don't like certain people. Like I would imagine some of them don't like Miss Love. <laughs> they can't think about that when they're on their decision. They got to think about the evidence that was provided to them at trial. And if they think someone is guilty or not, no personal feelings should be involved. Let's see what Miss Love says about all this. Uh, Mr. Steele himself conducted that interview and we knew nothing of it. Investigator Kirkman told us just previously to him being called in last week um, or week before that he recorded it. And so we served it on him because he recorded it and gave it to us. So we gave it to him. It's a statement of a witness. So I think that this entire motion in limine is a bit premature. God damn thug been eating good, bro. Look at that. When you spoke with Lieutenant Hamilton, mm -hmm. he was accompanied by ADA Christian Atkins as well as your boys. Is that correct? Later. And did you ever show up at the coffee shop? No. Were you aware that, that people were waiting for you at the coffee shop? Yeah, he was. No, I wasn't going to the coffee shop because when I talked to him, I told him I didn't drink coffee. We always um, made plans to go to the restaurant. Did you tell him you were going to be two hours late? No, I was trying not to show up. And when you got to the restaurant and ADA Christian Atkins spoke with you, did you all speak at an adjoining table to the one where Lieutenant Hamilton sat with your son? What is the point of them bringing up this? This love is trying to make it look like Investigator Hamilton is not a creep, but he's a creep. He called her mama and he was real nice to her and flirty and shit. And there's evidence of that. But apparently to Miss Love, this helps prove that why sells a big gang enterprise right now. All this bullshit. No, I talked to Atkins separate from Lieutenant Hamilton. Is it accurate that you told members of the DA's office that you had church and that you set the schedule for the times y'all were supposed to meet? Yes. Is there any text message that you sent or received that is not reflected in this exhibit? I'm not sure, but one thing I do know is the text messages on this paper that you're showing me, they're from two different phones, if you know that too. And Ms. Bennett, is it fair to say that over the years you have consistently carried more than one cell phone? No. Is it your testimony that this time, this period of time is the only time that you have ever carried more than one cell 
Yeah, my phone 983 number went out, and I told him that I wasn't going to have a phone. So that's when I had the 6024. That's when he was texting the call. Dude, Miss Love's trying to find her and lies about these this phone shit, but it takes up so much time, and it does not prove why I sell as a gang. The witnesses that they've called are f***ing useless for a jury. You still have the phone itself. It was broken. I it was broken. Was it broken in your possession, or was it broken in a fixer of the phone? Did you still have a physical phone? It was broken. Like, yeah, it was my phone. It was broken. The witness laughing in her face. Anything about harassment in a text message or a telephone call was after Lieutenant Hamilton told you he was going to have to get material witness in No. Ms. Bennett, when did you first mention this? Over the phone. To whom? Him. What did you say? I can't recall our conversation. You know what I'm saying? I can't recall. I don't remember what I said to him. It, it, I've been here said this. Like, it wasn't through a text message or something over the phone. It's been happening in a while. Your assertion and allegation about harassment had nothing to do with a report from 2013 that your home had gotten shot up. No, I've been, I've been saying that I was being harassed. So is it fair to say then that in 2013, there was no Lieutenant Hamilton doing anything, calling harassment texts or anything to you? No. What is that? What does 2013 have to do with anything? He was, he's been doing it recently, the past few years for this trial. He's been a little creep. You can tell in his text messages, this dude wants to bend her over. Bro, Brian still's trying not to fall asleep. Who's, who's, uh, whose phone call was it? Your Honor, it was uh, Lieutenant Hampton's phone call that Mr. Adams said they had no objection. I'm saying that you're sick. We said no objection now. And it's admitted that I'm sorry, talking. It's not admitted. It's admitted in the end, but it is still has it still has hearsay within it, which is not admissible. The fact that it's been admitted means that it does not make that portion admissible. That's my judgment. Your Honor, he's he's correct. I'm going to go ahead and I'll stand. Damn, judge said he's correct. I'm gonna sustain the objection. So they're showing her face now in an old video? Or was the point of not showing her face today in the past week or two? Okay, so they're showing the jury her gang affiliation right now. This is a state witness, so they're just trying to make her look like she's part of the gang and she's gonna lie on the stand. What's the point in bringing her in then? And what were those hand gestures meant to signify? I'm not sure. Way to discredit your own uh, witness, Miss Love. Very productive. Definitely proves why I sell as a gang. Miss Bennett basically snitched then, because she is not a civilian. She was part of the, a gang at some point, obviously. Made a mistake snitching in 2013, then never cooperated after that again. What is that meant to signify, Miss Bennett? A bird. Yes. A bird! That, that's one of the best things I've heard, bro. That is not no damn bird. You don't have to be a green bird, red bird, a yellow bird. Just a bird. Why did you put up uh, your fingers together to signify a bird in this moment? <laughs> Wow, I can't recall. Miss Bennett, do you have a five point star tattoo on your person? Yes. What is it meant to signify? My um, father, fifth child. And is that five point star red? In green. In green. She said it's supposed to represent her five children or something. What'd she say? It was like really quick. I mean, Miss Love turns on every witness she brings in. So, I mean, I don't know how this proves why it sells a gang, but whatever. Do I know what bird gang is? Yes. Mm -mm. Zone three. Zone three? Yes. No. I mean, this, this girl's lying, right? This is a lie, but we can't really prove it's a lie, but it's a lie. I don't know. I just did what everybody else did. Does this signify uh, sex money murder in any way? I'm not sure. Five minute comfort break turned into 20 minutes, but here we go on uh, cross examination with Mr. Adams. He's really good at cross with these witnesses. And you've been shown text messages between you and various members of the district attorney's office. Is that true? Yes. And, and you recognize some of those text messages that you, was, that you were showing, correct? Yes. Would you agree that these are text messages between, that purport to be between you and um, Madam Prosecutor, Ms. Love? Yes. Okay. And then your attention was drawn earlier to um, one, te one text message in particular, uh, which was dated November 26th of 2023. You remember that? There was a text message in particular uh, somewhere around New Year's. Do you remember that? Remember this one? Where it says, hi and happy New Year. That message came from Ms. Love? Yes. Talked about hope you and your boys are having a wonderful day. Yes. Talked about and Ms. Love at that time. Went on to talk to you about how you were a, quote, wonderful mom to those three boys in case no one else tells you that this year. You remember when she was talking to you in that fashion? Yes. Ms. Love was being all nice to her back then, trying to get her to snitch and talk. So Ms. Love's switching up in court, but this just proves nothing for why sell. Obviously, Ms. Love's going to try to butter her up and do that, but... And you remember her telling you those things as she was uh, talking to you about being a witness for the state in this case, right? Yes. That was about January, is that right? Yes. How you should view those questions. You remember those, that, that being said in that, those text messages? Yes. Well, I want the jury to see the person I met the other day. She's a wonderful person, and I need them to know it. You remember when she was talking to you like that? Yes. Damn, Miss Love a liar. She ain't showing the jury no positive shit. Then again, Miss Bennett did have to be arrested to come in. So clearly she wasn't going to testify and snitch. Like this was just pointless. She wanted the jury to see the person she met 
and what a wonderful person you were. That was about somewhere in early January, isn't that right? Yes. You would continuously tell them, look, I don't remember, or I don't know, I don't have nothing to say about that. Is that, that true? Yes. Asking you questions and telling you that they wanted you to come in and testify, right? Yes. Is it fair to say that most of their questions, most, everything that was asked about you, was geared towards what you could say about Jeffrey Williams? Is that what they were asking? Were they trying to see what it is you could, they could get you to say about Jeffrey Williams? Yes. I'm about to get a lawyer now, because I keep telling y'all I don't have shit to say, and y'all keep harassing me and my family, but I'll be there at 9.30. You remember that? Yes. All right. So we moved from November, um, and you're talking to the DA's office, right? Yes. And by the time February rolls around, you're still telling them, listen, I don't have anything to say. I don't have any information for you. Isn't that true? Yes. Some text messages that were put up on the screen, right? They don't capture all of the interaction between you and Hamilton, right? No. Now, were you imagining it when you said that uh, you thought that Investigator Hamilton was acting like he wanted to date you? Question. Same question. There was some conversation you had with her about her oh, getting you some counseling or getting you some help or something like that? Yes. Did, did you ever perceive that the, the counseling that she, you thought she was referring to was her locking you up to bring you here to testify? Did you ever think that was going to happen? No. Question. Same question. Did it lock you up though, didn't it? Yes. Even though you told them, look, I don't have anything to say, I don't remember anything about this, right? Yes. Same question. GM, now GM is good morning, right? Yes. Good morning, mama. Hope you slept well. Now, is, is that generally how he would communicate with you, how he would address you? That's the same question. Did he address you as mama on more than one occasion? Yes. See, I mean, that's pretty creepy. Like, more than one occasion he addresses her, like, saying mama. Like, you don't know me, but why are you calling her mama when this is like a professional relationship they're not friends he's trying to get her to snitch on the stand like he's trying to oil her up but it just comes off as creepy not professional whatsoever he sent you a text message this investigator for the da's office saying call me one more time then i'm out here for the night you remember that yes now how about the next one that same night wednesday february 7 6 45 p.m where he says hit me up if you're bored later we're not gonna talk shop remember that text message yes did you talk to him later on yes did y'all talk shop? Yes. What do you want to talk about? Going out. Going out and walking out the door or going out on a date? A date. And this is February 7th of 2024, this year, when the investigator for the DA's office is supposed to be talking to you about a case. But it's not <laughs> Doug is laughing, bro. I was calling you talking about going out on a date. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> Look at Doug smirking. The fact that this uh, employee of the district attorney's office was trying to date you come into your mind as you're thinking about whether you can come in here and testify or not. Yes. Creepy mother bro couldn't keep his dick in his pants for just a few months and not be creepy with a goddamn witness that puts thug in a robbery in these conversations with you he uh, referred to you as mama <laughs> she's laughing he sent your text message mama thank you mm -hmm. with a, fist, a little fist sign right yeah about, good morning hope you slept well mama remember that <laughs> yeah. hope you slept well mama what a creepy little bitch uh, investigator hamilton told you don't worry about that i can help you get another job was that in a text message or was that a phone conversation you with? no where it says, well, I was in an accident. I'm just not leaving the hospital. Like I said, I don't give a f if they lock me up. What that going to do? Shit, so can you get the judge to call me? Those your words? Yes. So she's either lying or that's the truth. Like she actually didn't say the judge can kiss my ass. Why did, where did they get that quote from? Maybe a phone call? Because they're about to see some more of the attorneys be on the news or in jail too for sexual harassment. Please do. That's your text message, right? Yes. That is verbatim your text message, right? Yes. So when you were asked last week, or when it was suggested that you said, tell the judge to kiss my ass, that is not what you said, is it? No. All right. You hear it right there, sir? I did not tell the judge to kiss my ass. I went not no reason to tell the judge that. I just wanted him to call me. We ever shown that video and said, hey, we're gonna show you this video so you can help enlighten the jury about this Rico case. Anybody ever show you the video and ask you that? No. Is there anything in any of that video, anything that has anything whatsoever to do with 2013, the 2013 incident you've been asked questions about? No. Is there anything about you wearing red, throwing up whatever kind of signs, or whomever it is you're with in that video that tells us anything about what happened in 2013? No. I mean, it doesn't. The judge can sustain that for form, whatever, but jury seeing this has nothing to do with the crimes that are alleged. That video is being shown to discredit their own witness because the witness is not helping them. I need you to discard the witness's answer. And uh, Ms. Benny, if, I, if there's an objection, stop talking. Oh. You know what your name is in the indictment anyway? No, objection. Sustain objection. <laughs> This trial's not ending this year. It's just so slow. Everything's so slow. We're still on this witness that doesn't really prove shit, and they have 150 more. Sex me murder have anything to do with this incident we talked about from 2013? No. So when you say broken, um, what do you mean? Tell me understand that. It's crack. So why did you need to get a new number for the crack phone? Why did I need to get a new number for the crack phone? When my phone was broken, I couldn't receive calls, uh, send out calls, so I had to get another phone. Okay. So you don't have a um, plan, or is it, why did you have to get a whole other phone? Work, right? No, I don't have a plan on it. So, going out from the phone that gave this call off, and a call at 6.22 p.m. coming in from your number. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't official call logs. These are screenshots. These could be deleted. You can delete phone calls in your phone. Like you go to your recent calls, you can swipe and delete it. Miss Bennett, do you have... Miss <laughs> Bennett said, come on, man. I got to use the bathroom. ...to show that any calls were made between you and Lieutenant Hamilton on February the 7th, other than the 6.02 p.m. call for three seconds and the 6.22 p.m. call coming in from you for nine minutes and 31 seconds. I can say I don't, I don't know what, what this is or which phone it was at the time. I just know you have a screenshot, so I don't know if, if it means him or me. I don't, I don't understand. Did you provide anyone with screenshots of your call history? No, I just seen everything because of you. Okay. I never provided nobody with nothing. You you provided everybody with everything. Did Mr. Adams ever ask you for a call log? No. Why is she hinting that Mr. Adams is doing shit now? She is always trying to make the lawyers look bad, bro. Like she's always trying to do sneaky shit like that. That is that Loki could be burden shifting. Mr. Adams, I'm gonna overrule your objection, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Shard, I'm gonna overrule your objection. State, don't ask that question ever again. He should have sustained it then, right? They're like, what? Well, what is going on then? What the f is this judge doing, bro? Overruled, but don't ask it again. It should have been sustained that lieutenant hamilton either received from you or made to you wasn't made until february the 9th would you agree with me on that i'm gonna stand your on the grounds it's been asked an answer let's move on judge gotta take a shit too did the state never provide you with your not screenshots but phone logs actual phone records to look at and ask you any questions about phone calls that had been made did they ever do that no did they ever provide you with phone records from investigator hamilton and ask you to look at those and ask you questions about phone calls that had been made did they ever do that no. Mic drop from Mr. Adams. These are f***ing screenshots. It's not official. You can delete phone calls from screenshots. Like, you can delete it. The state discredited their own witness and made her look like a gang affiliate, which she was 10 years ago, whatever. Apparently, this proves why sells a gang. The next witness is a crime scene investigator. They have her talking about Miss Bennett's apartment being shot up later on that night or whatever, apparently by Walter DK, but who knows if it's even true. So they're going to show crime scene photos of just Miss Bennett's apartment from 2013. It was a photograph in relation to apartment D that I was responding to. So it's to show it was two doors at the top of the stairs. This is the overall of the front door from the inside of the apartment. A uh, close up of a defect in the same door. Oh, uh, the bullet hole in the window right there. Yes, there are defects in the closet doors and the wall next to the closet door. Two bullet holes right here. One bullet hole in the wall. So they, whoever shot this apartment up got a few good shots in there. Definitely reckless behavior. But I wonder what the jury's thinking because this doesn't really prove much to me besides someone shot this apartment. Because the witness isn't snitching saying, yeah, it was these guys. Like the witness came in and did nothing for them. You know what I mean? What was your understanding of who was depicted in this cell phone? Those were the suspects. Oh, okay. So this this is not a good look for the jury to see this. Because obviously, Miss Bennett showed them this and said, these are the guys that robbed me. That's not a good look. All right, Mr. Adams, Doug's lawyer coming up for cross. Let's see his approach for this uh, witness. He was there before you got there. Yes. Crime scenes sometimes tell a story. <clears throat> yes. Right? They kind of, you can look at the evidence that you see a crime scene, and that will give you some indication as to what may have happened at that location, correct? Yes. Because you can't always go by what someone tells you happened at a scene, right? Correct. Someone could tell you that something happened a certain way, but the evidence might speak differently. Isn't that true? Correct. All right. And so when you arrive as a crime scene investigator, what you're doing is you're doing an unbiased diagnosis or analysis of the evidence that you find at the location, correct? Yes. And that is what you did here. Yes. Because you weren't there to see him, correct? No. You didn't witness any of this? No. You showed up on the 13th of May, 2013, correct? Yes. And the information that you had, it, well, you tell me if you had this information, is that something had occurred at that location on May the 12th of 2013. Is that right? Um, no, that's generated as well from the incident number. Okay. You just know that you were called to the location, you showed up on the 13th, and you were asked, or you were directed by Officer Kirkman to go ahead and process the scene. Yes. So he's just downplaying her whole job here. Showing the jury there's a time frame where she has no idea what happened and all that bullshit. So he's just casting doubt. That's all that Mr. Adams is doing right now. All you knew about was you were directed to apartment D, right? Yes. Okay. And so you you weren't doing an investigation of your own. You were essentially following the instructions of Officer Kirkman, correct? Correct. Right. You had no idea about any statements that had been given to Officer Kirkman by anyone before you got there, right? No. Does Space 9AA um, show a hole that goes straight through the door? No. Now, do you know what 9A represents? Do you have any idea what it means? What it represents? What picture represents? Yes. Want to tell us? It's, it's a defect to the door. We don't know how it's false. No. Get off the stand. What's the point? She just took pictures of the crime scene. Doesn't know shit. So we got Detective Quinn back up on the stand. Don't know why we need him again. I feel, thought we got his incident out the way, but I guess, or I guess they're going back to that incident. I don't know. Brian's still off for cross. Here we go. We're talking again. It's been a long time. We're talking about September 11, 2013, Adrian Bean slamming into the side of laundromat. That's <laughs> We're back on that laundromat incident. The one where Thug was never charged because there's not really any proof he was even there. Tell us if you recognize this as a surveillance video. 
camera on the side of that building on top of the uh, red 2004 Nissan vehicle. May I see something fuzzy up here underneath this green awning right here? Yes. Yeah. Right underneath it. And do you recognize that as a surveillance video camera? I do now. <laughs> Brian's still pointing out that there's a surveillance video there, but they apparently never got it. Casting doubt on their investigation. Or maybe this this probably, this probably camera probably didn't work, but... I would say that's a better shot of it, yeah. Okay. So he's playing the police traffic radio of them talking about the surveillance footage, but they never got it or something went wrong. The units, if you guys see a uh, Toyota Tundra green in color, uh, let that vehicle inside. It's going to be the owner. You can uh, access the video footage for us. All right, send in the green... You were, um, to be fair to you, nobody reported this to you, that they that's were watching the video. And I believe, based upon that, but you correct me if I'm wrong, that's why you didn't have the video secured, safe, correct? I knew nothing of a video on this case. Damn, this car really slammed in the front yard of this house, bro. Adrian Bean was flying, but his words, he says the car had a mind of its own and just went. That damage, to your knowledge, came by Mr. Bean's driving of that vehicle. Is that fair to say? I would say so. I wanted to, my concern was that holding that headrest was a primary concern to me. Is the passenger side rear uh, window door area looking into the vehicle, is that true? Yeah, we call them vent windows, yeah. And the vent window um, was taken out um, based upon your information by Detective Robertson L's firing self-defense. I mean, that was my educated theory. I mean, based off what I knew, I assumed. That's crazy if that's true that the police officer shot that window because that's apparently right where Thug was sitting. Six foot three man sitting back there. So Thug got lucky with these bullets flying everywhere. This is what you said is a defect. We're gonna show the other side too. So this is a defect potentially caused by a bullet. Is that fair to say? I believe that. But do you see any type of soot or gunpowder burns or stippling or anything like that in this headrest? I don't see any of that. So the stipling or whatever he's talking about is gunpowder spray. He's trying to debunk the theory that Thug shot his friend in front of him in the car. He's trying to say that there would be gunpowder spray on that if because of how close it is. It's like within three feet. If you're close up on something, there's going to probably more than likely be scorching or burning from that explosion of that projectile coming out of that gun. You can make reasonable conclusions that the gunshots weren't fired close up in any situation if you don't have that present. Yeah, and that's as far as I go because I'm not a gun expert, but I've been shooting them for years. This is what I was confused about. So this is the bullet path of Robertson L, the police officer, shooting into the vent window and it hit the headrest. This is really similar to the Melly shit for some reason, but I was sitting in this back right seat right here too. So he got really lucky, bro. Like it literally went eight inches to the right of his head, six inches to the right of his head. That the exit on the, towards the um, front part of that headrest towards the front seat yes. is lower than the headrest on the back part of that uh, headrest. Is that fair? I think that's fair to say. Okay. So assuming a bullet goes in a straight direction, if a person, let's say in the back seat, fired that weapon, the gun or the, mu the muzzle of the gun has to be at whatever angle can make that has to be higher than the entrance wound to the headrest to make a downward angle. Is that fair I mean, to say? I, I can't speak on that. I'm, not, I'm not no expert with all that. And that gentleman who is six foot eight, got a bit shot in the back, left shoulder. Is that fair to say? That's why I'm there. Other than that, I would not even be on the scene. How would the person, as you know, in the back of that car not get hit? Objective speculation. On the right hand side. Speculation. Did you, did you do any type of experiment? It's a simple experiment. Did you do any type of experiment to determine whether a person sitting in that back seat where those bullets to Mr. Murphy and the headrest and how they would miss it. Did you do anything? I did not. Oh, okay. So he's saying if someone was in the back seat, they're saying Thug was, he was leaning down, hiding, like damn near the floor. That's why he didn't get hit. I mean, it's just casting doubt on this whole situation. This whole situation is stupid anyway. It doesn't really even prove why so it was a gang and it barely proves that Thug was even there because there's no witnesses. There's a lot of mistakes with the description of Thug saying he's a girl and has big titties. Like, it's all over the place, bro. Just to be precise, his sister, his sister Dolly, that's what I remember. It's a name, you know, you don't hear much. She explained she was his now his manager and they wanted to hire me as their road security. We already know all this, but this is cross. That's why this is all being repeated. Brian Steele's trying to find a hole or a lie or try to make... Detective Quinn looked dumb here in a way. Have any dealings with security for um, popular <laughs> That's not what I do. I'm a low rent, get your extra cheese type police officer. I do the stuff with the least impact, like sitting at a jewelry counter for 11 years. Get your extra cheese. That's pretty much all the testimony for today. Join the channel membership right now. I really appreciate the support. It's only 10 cents a day. Hit the join button down below. Love you guys. Peace out.